Now here's a, a grid that I have set up and basically what's happening behind the scenes is the web data grid is bound to an object data source. And the object data source implements the interface that is required in order to do selects, to do inserts, updates, and deletes. So the grid can talk to this data source control in order to work with the underlying data source in order to handle all the CRUD operations. Now the demo I'm showing you here uses the object data source, but obviously you could use other data source controls as well. So to see it in action, let's come up here and uh, start by adding an item to the list. So we'll add uh, Mr. Gymnasium to the list of his friends here. And so when I press the enter key, that change has now been persisted back to the, the data store because it uses the data source control. I can select on an item and I'll press the delete key and that will remove it also from the data source and then I can do an update. Now what's nice about the updates is that they're, they're deferred so I'll change this item here and then I can come in and change this item down here and so once I'm done making the updates to the grid I can simply click on the update button and now those changes are persisted back to the data stores. So let me go ahead and show you how it's all set up. It's actually pretty simple and so let's start off by opening up Visual Studio. So here I am in Visual Studio 2008. I've got the script manager on the page, of course, uh, as a requirement for the web data grid. A web data grid itself and also the object data source. Now the object data source is, is basically blank right now, so we're going to fill that out. The first thing I want to make sure I do, though, is though even though I have columns defined in the web data grid, I need to make sure that I set up a value for the data key fields. And I know that my object, the primary key or the unique value, for the, the key field is going to be the ID. So I'm going to place that in there like that. Now the next thing I want to do is come over to this object data source and let's, uh, let's give it the information it needs in order to talk to the appropriate object. So I'm going to come down here and choose person repository. Select next and then for the, the select method we'll just do a, a get all. For updates we have one named update. For insert we have one called insert and delete. For this one, I'm going to choose the one where I'm passing in the ID uh, at uh, the primary key value. So I'm clicking finish and now I can simply associate this with my object data source. Now I just want to keep this demo simple so I'm just using the first and last name so I'm going to say no to this. I've already set up my keys and already set up my columns. Um, in Under normal circumstances you would probably want to, to do that though. So now the grid is associated to the object data source and now I can start adding behaviors. So to make everything work like I want, uh, I need the editing core. I need cell editing, row adding, and row deleting. Now row deleting is, uh, has a dependency upon the selection behavior so we'll go ahead and say to turn that on. And if I come to editing core you can see that the auto crud property defaults to true. And so basically auto crud is the notion of being able to handle the crud operations without having to implement any of the code ourselves, because talking to, to the data source or the uh, data source control will manage all of that for us. So now that we've got the, the grid set up with the appropriate behaviors and we've got the object data source, there's one piece of code that I want to make sure gets placed in the code behind because as the data source control is using the objects, what I don't want it to do is to use the same, or excuse me, what I don't want it to do is to create a new uh, instance of that object every time it tries to do something. What I want it to do is use the same object. So the key to this is go to the object creating events, and so as this object is uh, creating the instance that it needs, we can pass it in the event args. And all this here is is pretty different than what you would do in your application. This is basically an area here where um, I can have my repository available, um, but it's stored in session. And so that's why I'm wrapping it up um, with this web state repository. You wouldn't do this because you would have a database or a service or whatever, but for dem demonstrations purposes, I can do my persistence in, in session and that all works just fine. Now I did things a little backwards. I pasted in the code here for the object creating event. So I need to make sure that my uh, object data source maps to that so let's go ahead and put the pointer in here and now it'll be able to find that. So at this point everything will work like I want it to. I, I'll be able to select the the items into the grid when the page loads. I can add an item. I can even delete an item. But if you remember the updates were deferred and basically all the grid is looking for is a post back. 
So you could do what I'm about to do here and initiate a post back, um, just a, a blank post back. And, and what I'll do is I'll put a button here. And you'll notice there's no on click handler, there's no code that's running in, in, in the server. I'm just initiating a post back in order to persist those updates. You could do something like this, or maybe you have some other reason that you need to post back on your page. Either one will work. The grid will go in and look for any changes to its data source on post back. So if you do an update, it'll find it. So now that we have all the pieces together, let's run this and see if it indeed is working as we expect. So there's my, my list of people. I can come in and add uh, John Doe. Oops, <laughs> didn't get his last name. All right, so we'll do an update here. And we can even come through and delete Phil, delete John, and update this, and update this. And there we have our changes. So that's the Web Data Grid's AutoCRUD features uh, in a nutshell. Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.